Well, I'm really looking forward to our next concert with the Rochester Symphony. It's called Sinfonietta Extraordinaire. Sinfonietta is a smaller orchestra, and here we're trying to show what a lot of great composers have done in that they believe that wonderful music can be made with a smaller group. You don't need a huge symphony orchestra for every piece, and case in point, Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach's known as being a serious composer, primarily of church music. But on Friday nights, he liked to take the same musicians he knew in church down to Zimmerman's Coffee House on the corner in Leipzig, Germany, and make some music just for fun. The fun piece we're doing has been called Brandenburg Concerto No. 4. Bach just knew it as a wonderful piece featuring two flutes and a violin. We have our own Liz and Kay on flute and Mike on violin showing us how it should be done. It's Bach at its merriest. It's a lot of fun. And you can imagine you're in a coffee house just as we are right now at the Fiddlehead Coffee House here at Forger. Well, now, Mozart was such a genius that he taught himself how to write symphonies when he was eight years old. And they weren't bad. But something happened to him when he was 18. That year, 1774, he wrote six symphonies in one year. The last one was of an entirely different quality than anything he had written for any combination of instruments or voices before. The symphony number 29, as we call it now, raises raises the game completely. It's more elegant, it's more beautifully crafted, it treats the instruments with perfect grace, and it has a sense of artistry that I don't think he ever really got much beyond in his whole life. He finally became Mozart here at the age of 18, and this symphony shows just what he could do. Then we go to the strange case of Peter Warlock. His birth name was Philip Hesseltine. He was really two persons in one body. As Hesseltine, he was studious, shy, an academic who studied early music, medieval and Renaissance, and he loved that music. But then he started to write his own music, and as Peter Warlock, he was brash, almost obnoxious, uh, very egocentric, very stuck on what he did, and very stylish uh, in the London community. And he went between being a recluse and being way over the top. As a recluse, as a scholar, he found music from 1589 in Paris in a book called Orchestrographie, combined an orchestra and choreography, and the idea was a, an essay about music that talked about dance, how to do the steps, and what music should be made to it. First essay like that ever in history. And he turned the melodies that he found there over to his alter ego, his other self, Peter Warlock. And Warlock created a piece for string orchestra using the melodies from 1589 and an early 20th century sense of orchestration that makes an electric piece one of my favorite pieces ever written for string orchestra. And we end with Aaron Copland, maybe the greatest of all American composers and I think his best piece, Appalachian Spring. In 1944, he and the choreographer Martha Graham got the idea for telling a story about a young couple setting up their home on the western frontier of America. Now at that time, uh, when this was said in the 1820s, the western frontier was not the Rocky Mountains or even the Mississippi River. It was the Appalachian Mountains, which we think of as our eastern range now. But that was the western part of the country. And we hear of their struggles, the energy they had to put in, their piety, and finally at the end, peace. And on the way, he introduces a song that Americans really didn't know about. It's called Simple Gifts, a shaker melody that I think everybody knows today. But back then, people didn't know it, and it's because he put it in this ballet that Simple Gifts has become almost a national hymn for America today. That's Appalachian Spring by Copeland, I think the greatest music ever written by an American. Sinfonietta Extraordinaire, smaller orchestra with great music by Bach, Handel, Peter Warlock, and Aaron Copeland, and it's happening at Lord High School on Saturday and Sunday, November 18th and 19th, Saturday at 7.30, Sunday at 2. You can find tickets at the door or check out rochestersymphony.org or give us a call in Rochester at 28 Music and we'll see you at the concert.